We need a great reset. Learn to use the dark side of the force. Yes. Dun, dun, dun. Big news, Gons. And this is, as all big news should, this is so delightfully being presented to us by the Washington Post. Mm-hmm. And the headline is How the Biden Administration Let Right Wing Attacks Derail Its Disinformation Efforts. Whoa. Does, uh, it's. The author uh-huh. of this article, Taylor Lorenz, has she not gotten the memo from uh, uh, Bezos that he's he's a Republican now? He's right wing. You know, you know what's funny? I believe this Taylor Lorenz woman. She gets. Uh, she, you, do you know who this is? Do no, you know her, her? You've okay. Oh, so you have she, she, the following she was the story. In the, uh, yeah, she was. She went viral recently for something. I forget what it was. She is uh sort of the poster child for the uh, sort of journalistic victimhood online. Right, 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 yeah. right. Yes. She she doxed the libs of TikTok yes, person. Yes, that's right. That was a few weeks a, ago, yeah. In an entirely unprofessional way, and then there was some backlash, and then she was saying, oh, this backlash is just so unfail, <laughs> uh, unfair, and it's hatred, and and I'm just, a, I'm just a girl on the internet. Don't be mean to me. Yeah. Uh, which, you know, she, I mean, she's a very controversial figure. So it makes sense that she's kind of taking the reins on WAPO's disinformation uh, Ministry of Truth reporting here. Yeah. And so here's the news. On the morning of April 27th, the Department of Homeland Security announced the creation of the first, the first disinformation governance board with the stated goal to, quote, coordinate countering misinformation related to homeland security. The Biden administration tapped Nina Jankowicz, a well-known figure in the field of fighting disinformation and (laughs) extremism, as the board's executive director. We know this woman. She sings the Mary Poppins song. Yeah, not well, but yes, yes. Yeah, been all sorts of memes about her. She's, uh, you know, a young lady who wrote a book or two. We'll hear about that in a second. Um, In naming the 33-year-old Jankowicz to run the newly created board, nice touch there, the administration chose someone with extensive experience in field field of disinformation. (laughs) Not the field. So so she means that uh, Jankowicz has been in just in disinformation, just yes, soaking in all exactly. the disinformation. She's extensive just... <laughs> experience in field of disinformation. It all seems right. like it was okay. a translation error there. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I, I know. Love it. Which has emerged as an urgent and important important issue. Emerge, the author, huh? yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's just emerged. The author of the books, How to Be a Woman Online. And How to Lose the Information War. Her career also featured stints at multiple nonpartisan think tanks and nonprofits and included work that focused on strengthening democratic institutions. Within the small community of disinformation researchers, her work was well regarded. Small but, community of disinformation researchers. Yeah, yeah I this is who a that small is. community of dis. I mean, I would say we are in a community of disinformation researchers. <laughs> no, this is a very consider, vague phrase. I, know, the title of I group. consider disinformation research to be like our main yeah. job on this show, and not just us. There's many people doing it, but it's uh, it's of interesting course. that she how she sees as. Those who are, you know, leading the way with the disinformation research is uh, Jankowitz. But within hours, by the way, I mean, Jankowitz is younger than you, Gons, yeah. by a not insignificant like percentage of her lifetime. So, you know, these are the... Not that, this much. Is I'm the, not that old, man. Oh, well, you know, what is it? What is it six years? <laughs> yeah, six six years, years of difference? Yeah, yeah. Well, if you're 30 years old, six years is like 20% of your life, over uh-huh. 20% of your life. Anyways, uh-huh. but within hours of news of her appointment, Jankowicz was thrust into the spotlight by the very forces she dedicated her career to combating. <laughs> oh, no. She was the thrown board into is... the, the lion's den. Yes. Oh, she was thrust into the spotlight. Spotlight 
by the very forces she dedicated her career to combating. So just so she's listen blaming. to that rhetoric. Yeah. Okay. Let's just deconstruct that real quick. So she became the head of a governmental board mm. of truth uh, distribution truth warriors. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And which is a big deal considering how big of a deal disinformation, misinformation and malinformation is a matter of national security nowadays. Right. So, you know, a fairly important role and a big deal. But it wasn't the government or Biden or her acceptance of this job that thrust her into the spotlight. No, 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 no. It was the right-wing extremist Russian propagandists that put her in the spotlight, uh, which is just a ridiculous notion. And a in classic Taylor Lorenz style, uh, considering becoming a public figure, a government official, and having people talk <laughs> about you on the internet means you are being attacked by right-wing extremists. I mean, it is, it is, you can see why Taylor, Taylor Lorenz was the one uh, to be chosen to, to write this article. Because, uh, yeah, so there you go. Yeah. It, she was, Jenkowicz was thrust into the spotlight oh, by the very forces she dedicated her career to combating. The board itself and the DHS received criticism for both its somewhat ominous name and scant details of specific mission. Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas said, quote, it could have done a better job of communicating what it is and what it isn't. We've all heard that clip. It's really embarrassing. But Jenkowicz was on the receiving end of the harshest attacks with her role mischaracterized as she became a primary target on the right wing internet oh there's a right wing internet there's a right wing internet and again because this is what we do just notice a very strange detail uh primary target on the right wing internet right and wing are not capitalized but internet is capitalized for some unimaginable reason, internet is capitalized. I don't know why. It's just Usually strange. it's a spell check thing. You can't type internet in any kind of word doc without it telling you. Is it a proper noun? It is. I internet so. is a proper noun. I believe so, yeah. Let me double check I... that. I... I've never heard that before. She has been subject to an unrelenting barrage of harassment and abuse while unchecked misrepresentations of her work continue to go viral. Oh boy. Now, just three weeks after its announcement, the Disinformation Governance Board is being paused, quote unquote, <laughs> according paused. to multiple employees at DHS. Okay, so this is according to multiple employees, not a press release, not nothing like that, capping a back and forth week of decisions that changed during the course of reporting of this story. On Monday, DHS decided to shut down the board, according to multiple people with knowledge of the situation. Great. Don't name any sources. That would be, you know, what they call journalism, Taylor. By Tuesday morning, Jankowicz uh, had drafted a resignation letter in response to the board's dissolution. But Tuesday night, the next day, Jankowicz was pulled into an urgent call with DHS officials who gave her the choice to stay on, even as the department's work was put on hold because of the backlash it faced. Hey, hey. Ooh, Sorry, Cody's Cody's getting out. the world eater is here. That's good to know. Um, so, uh, so listen to that. So she resigned. She drafted yeah. a resignation letter, but then was pulled back in. They didn't, even though the board was was disbanded, they wanted to keep her in on the on Department of Homeland Security, uh, or at least they gave her the choice to stay on, even as the department's work was put on hold because of the backlash it faced. So it truly was public outcry and criticism that got the board shut down, which I think we should all take a moment and appreciate that. I'm not going to say this this story is over and that it's a victory, but they are admitting that the the amount of public backlash uh, was at least one principal reason why it's been put on pause, uh, according to multiple people with knowledge of the call. Again, no sources. 
Working uh, groups within DHS focused on mis, dis, and malinformation have been suspended. The board could still be shut down pending a review from the Homeland Security Advisory Council. On Wednesday morning, Jankowicz officially resigned from her role within the, uh, within the department. Quote, Nina Jankowicz have been, has been subjected to unjustified and vile personal attacks and physical threats. A DHS spokesperson told the Post in a statement, quote, in congressional hearings and in media interviews, the secretary has repeatedly defended her as eminently qualified and underscored the importance of the department's disinformation work, and he will continue to do so. Yankowicz has not spoken publicly about her position since the day it was announced. Yankowicz's experience is a prime example of how the right-wing internet apparatus operates, where far-right influencers attempt to attempt to identify a target. Now, listen to this. This is one of the bigger parts of this article, where they, you know, you have these disinformation researchers, right? And now what you're about to hear is sort of is a result of this disinformation research. They've broken down the strategy of the far-right internet and how they take down government institutions. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to start it over. Jankowicz's experience is a prime example of how the right-wing internet apparatus operates, where far-right influencers attempt to identify a target, present a narrative, and then repeat mischaracterizations across social media and websites with the aim of discrediting and attacking anyone who seeks to challenge them. Does that, that sound that exactly <laughs> what, Does that sound familiar to you, Number Gox? one, exactly what Jankowitz is doing here, but also uh -huh. what the disinformation board was uh, basically and, prompted to do. And also specifically what Taylor Lorenz has built her entire career on. <laughs> It also shows what happens when institutions, when confronted with these attacks, don't respond effectively. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not going to read the whole article. The rest of the article goes into how uh, how they're very upset that when Jankowicz was being sort of rightfully um, investigated by the public, that... The Department of Homeland Security did not come to her rescue. How sort of personal issues online, you know, personal, uh, you, you know, let's even in their words, things like personal harassment or having your credentials called into question on Twitter or people making funny videos based on pretty offensive musicals that you've sung in the past and made videos about and posted on TikTok, all these things, DHS and just sort of organizations in general don't really make it their business to protect, you know, individuals like that. And uh, the article goes on to talk about how it's the Biden administration's fault. It's the government's fault for not standing up and personally protecting the reputation of Jankowicz. And it, it takes a second to realize what they're talking about, but what they're talking about is literally censoring any negative feedback about her role on the board. I mean, they, they talk about how uh, oh, the, the very thing that she was brought on to do would have saved her all of this grief. And uh, they just go on to, to say, hey, you know what? Biden should have censored the entire Internet to make it so nobody could question uh, her role at the Ministry of Truth. And uh, that well, is this is that I, is the sort of beautiful. Are you there or did I cut you off? Conglomeration. Oh, no, you cut yourself of, off. Uh, yeah, it's a beautiful conglomeration of I don't know. It's, it's like a, uh, a mosaic of. Uh, what happens when you combine Taylor Lorenz and the Washington Post uh, and, you know, somebody who sings musicals on TikTok? <laughs>
So here, here's something that it says in the article here. Unlike the Ministry of Truth and George Orwell's 1984 that became a derogatory comparison point, neither the, the board nor Jankowitz had any power or ability to declare what is true or false or compel internet providers, social media platforms, or public schools to take action against certain types of speech. In fact, the board itself had no power or authority to make any operational decisions. Which right. is like, yeah, but they would be used as like a report to so, inflict law right. or whatever it might be. So yeah, okay. So we broke we broke it down a bit. Uh, they don't have authority, as in some sort of like legal power wielding authority. Right. But they would be the the contact the the influencer board uh, to tell the authorities what to do. Right. I mean, that was the whole point. Even in the explanation, when they're like, no, 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 it's not the Ministry of Truth. It's just the people who tell the Ministry of Truth what to do. Yeah, see, it's totally different. Right. The DHS and, uh, uh, spokesperson is quoted here saying the board's purpose has been grossly mischaracterized. It will not police speech. Quite the opposite. Its focus is to ensure yes. that freedom of speech is protected. Yeah, like, some nice okay. double speak yeah. there. <laughs> no, like, they're not here to censor you. They're here to make you more free, make your speech more free. Um, so this is interesting news. Now, it, it does say that it's just been on pause, which is, or it's been put on pause, which is a wonderful, um, you know, way to take a step back Take the heat off of the board. Take the heat out of Jankowix, and uh, let it let the pot sort of simmer down a little bit, um, and then they can bring it back sort of quietly without making such a big hullabaloo about it. Um, but you know, Glenn Greenwald had a great thread. Uh, over on his Twitter, basically pointing out not only the problem with Lorenz being the one to write this article, uh, but the the very notion that uh, the like questioning someone put in charge of censoring the internet, questioning even even just on a professional level their their qualifications amounts to right-wing extremism is uh just a really scary scary thing and lorenz again right in the article is talking about how ah see this is why we need the ministry of truth so that the ministry of truth doesn't get uh you know <laughs> doesn't doesn't get any negative press uh, but for now, it's on pause, and we'll just see what happens. Yeah, this article just goes on and on and on, and just rambles about all the things. It's just crazy. They bring up Gab yeah, and the DHS, and my goodness. She's oh, they laid to, on uh, thick. They yeah. laid on really, really thick, and it's very long. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so right. there you go.